Hello and welcome to Weekend Investing Daily Bites. We are shooting episode 207 on 7th of April. The topic of discussion today is how we should never buy into euphoria. We should allow our trades or investment to come to us and not chase uh you know stocks that may be just running away in the interim. Uh especially for shorter term trades. For longer term trades you can you know give away a couple of percentage points does not matter but for very short term trades you must know your plan of action of that trade if in case you are chasing that particular stock or uh, running away uh markets were a bit soft in the morning on the back of uh, hawkish comments from the us fed um the yields uh, have not really come down and the dollar index is going up so there was pressure on all emerging markets to start the day but somewhere around noon there was humongous selling pressure and probably we will know by the end of the day in the FII numbers that maybe a lot of selling has happened today and it was all across the board uh, from energy stocks to metal stocks in fact more so in in sectors which had run up in the last few days so power sector stocks had run up crazily adani power jsw energy tata power it all been all have been running very very hard metal stocks have been doing well commodities have been doing well so it's a bit of a profit taking in those sectors and uh, pharma was pharma fmcg these were the areas where the defensive buying went into and real estate also held on after reports that the last 6 months of uh, sales in the uh, real estate space has picked up very nicely so overall not not a good day but i mean after a week of good running uh, a day or two of uh, some correction is not ruled out and today also being the expiry day Uh, in terms of the index nifty closed down 0.95% uh, mid cap also closed below 3 quarters of a percent small caps were hit the least at 0.43% nifty next 50 uh, minus 0.3% so there was uh, weakness all across the board but not not on on any alarming basis the weekend investing strategies also gave up good ground mi 25 mi 30 mi evergreen nnf 10 mi 50 mi all cap all 1 to 2% roughly mi eth 2 was a surprise winner today at 0.32% and others between 0 and 1% overall for the week still looking quite good and for the uh, new financial year uh, we have seen that mi 25 has raised up already 5% mi eth has raised up already 4% So these are the two sort of uh, best performing stock uh, strategies for this current financial year so far in terms of top gainers dcb bank up 13% bharat dynamics suzlon energy 8 to 9% up salora again 8% up tenla platforms it has taken a huge amount of consolidation and now it is starting up so maybe uh, you know we are we are starting a very strong new leg up on this the, the volumes were huge uh, on the day today for tanla platforms escorts uh, post that open offer uh, i think stocks stock is weak minus 9% gsfc minus 7% adani stocks were hit pretty badly so adani total gas down 7% idfc after its recent run is down 6% and webo global was down about 5%. So as i said never buy into euphoria what has happened with the hdfc bank twins since that announcement on 4th uh, or rather uh, 3rd uh, uh, 4th sorry 4th of uh, april that the two are merging and both had risen up immediately in the morning between about 10 to 12% and a lot of people probably bought it there uh, and within 3 days you can you, you you are seeing that the entire gain of that gap up has been given up both are now down about 11 to 13% from that top 
if somebody had entered with leverage long they have been badly bruised already somebody has taken a long term position it does not matter 10% here or there but still nobody should be running after uh, you know some stocks after a news has broken out so usually what this is a pattern the pattern is that stocks will run up before the news is out in this case we will need to study but i think they were holding pretty well before this news came out so maybe there was some leakage of the news and immediately on the news there was a gap up of 10% even before the news the merger ratio was pretty much in line so there was no mismatch as such of the uh, uh, of the merger ratio but both simultaneously gapped up and there was a lot of retail buying i suppose and that has cooled off now and then both the stocks have come back to where they were more or less so always make a point not to buy once the news is out once the news is out it is usually late i'm not saying always but it is usually late when the news has been flashed on on the television or you read it in the newspaper at that point of time most people who had to get in before that move happened have already done that and now they are willing to sell you as you go to buy after the news has happened so you are the sucker in this case uh, usually so the people who are smart who have the inside information who have been watching the trend from before the news have are already riding it and now that you are wanting to buy it after reading the news they will dump it on you that is the usual pattern in any stock on any major news you would have noticed this on any uh, uh, quarterly result announcements you can notice this i mean this is very very common and uh, this will happen at least in 70 80% of the cases another insight today is this us dollar russian ruble rate uh, if you remember uh, february 24th the war had started Uh, Russia versus Ukraine, and the USD ruble just collapsed from about seventy-five uh, rubles to a dollar, and it went to once almost one sixty, or at least one fifty-five, and then within the next, uh, it took two weeks to go there, and in the next two or three weeks, it is now back at the pre-war level. I mean that is an amazing reversal. it's very rare to see these kind of reversals so i mean this chart is telling you who has the upper hand in the in the situation that is out there so you know so you i mean russia versus the west uh, i mean if russia was the weak hand here this would not have come back to 75 so this is telling you a lot about what the situation is prevailing and crude oil crude oil also has cooled off to near 100 after reaching 140 so both these put together uh, are giving you an indication that you know the market is discounting uh, all that war premium uh, that was there and uh, uh, basically uh, uh, it is now being seen as uh, you know not a not a impediment to regular life going ahead although i mean there would be i i would imagine more disruptions coming but the market is currently not uh pricing that uh, with any particular premium on the war so it was it is it has basically come back to the pre war uh, levels uh so the oil as you can see here uh, it had risen uh, in february 24th here the war started and it went from uh, 2nd december to uh, 24th february was around plus 40% and then it went up another uh, went to plus 90% and uh, then from since then it has 9th of uh, march it has started to collapse and it has retraced back uh, 23% since that top so so crude oil has got cooled off and hopefully we will not get too many 
hikes in INR basis also now that this cool off has happened. So we have to wait and watch now what will be the next geopolitical step Russia or uh, Ukraine backed by the West may take. So this is all I had for today's uh, uh, weekend investing daily bite. I hope you are liking uh, the information and the discussion we have in this small snippet uh, almost on a daily basis. The idea is to keep abreast of things in the market. The idea is to keep uh, uh, you know updating you about the performance of the weekend investing portfolio that you may be having. Uh, to expose you to momentum investing, to uh, essentially share with you any insights that I may have had during the day. So this is the whole purpose of uh, Weekend Investing Daily Bites and I hope you are liking it. So Please do share it with your friends and family and I will see you in another video. Bye.